Hey, this is Jeremy with Sustainable Village Redevelopment. I'm here to talk to you today about uh, the developmental process for real estate. Uh, something near and dear to my heart after our first development, something that I know pretty well after having gone through the complete process so recently, and some of the pitfalls, tricks, and tips that uh, I would offer anybody who's looking to get into this exciting and rewarding uh, field of real estate redevelopment. Um, in your local town or community. First and foremost, I think that you absolutely have to understand the zoning in your local town or community. Um, basically what this is constructed of are these six uh, line items. The height limit, how high can you build the building? Um, if you can build higher, that allows you opportunities to add and augment um, the structure so you can get more floor area. The floor area ratio pertains to how many square foot of building you can build compared to how many square feet of lot you have. So if your floor area ratio is higher, you can build a bigger building. Um, setbacks, obviously, is how, the, how far out you can build the building to the lot line. Um, if you can build farther out or if you can use, um, if you have an alley behind the property and that allows you to use some of the alley to um, comply with your setbacks on the back, you can build the building farther towards the rear of the lot and build it bigger or better situated so that you can use more of the land for a courtyard or whatever. Um, obviously, how many units you can build is huge because the more apartments you can build, the more rent that the building will bring in and the better it will offset your, um, you know, your uh, pro forma and that. Uh, is there an opportunity for a density bonus? Generally speaking, in San Diego, I think if you can get up to five units or over five units, you can apply to the city to get a density bonus. Usually this entails giving them some portion, usually 10% of your apartments at market rate rent or affordable rent, and they'll allow you 20% more apartments. So you give them one, you get two, something like that, um, depending on how many units you're actually building. Um, and then probably the lastly, uh, I know a lot of architect developers and there's architectural trickery involved in this. Um, can you build a two-story apartment that you can chop into two after final um, by building duplicate floor plans and putting an interior stairwell and doors that lock? Um, can you turn a garage into a living space after final by plumbing it, pre-plumbing it, things like that? Just ways to monetize your development in different ways so that your overall cash flow is better, uh, setting you up better for future developments. Um, secondly is buying the property. I mean, obviously you're gonna try and be looking for some sort of deal, um, we're looking for maybe something run down, distressed, the owner's behind on the payments or it's bank owned, or it's obviously, hopefully just not built to the highest and best use, which is what you're gonna be looking to do by developing that property. Or it's raw land. Um, that's something that I'm not completely familiar with, but we're gonna be getting into probably later on. Um, and then understanding the loan programs. Um, obviously the 203K and the Homestyle Renovation Loan are fixer-upper loans and uh, allow you to really economically build up to four units. Um, whether it's a single family house you're buying and you're adding a few units, you can go up to four units um, with 3% down financing. Um, and it generally goes up to 1.2 to 1.3 million top to build whatever you're gonna build. So if you can build four units for that, you can build four. If, if you can only build two or three, you know, you add an additional one or two units. And then there's obviously traditional construction loan. Uh, lending, which requires a much higher down payment. Um, and hopefully these beginning programs, the 203K and the Homestyle Renovation Loan, are the baby step that gets you to the point where you can afford to do bigger buildings, um, which is kind of where we're looking at, leveraging your first couple of properties and then building up to the point where you could build a little bit bigger community or whatnot. Um, as far as the nuts and the bolts of the developmental steps, in my opinion, there's a lot of them, but these are them. Um, there's not many books on this, so I'm gonna go through them and hopefully this adds value for um, you building a home for yourself or building a duplex or building a fourplex or, or whatever your intention is, uh, whether it's income property or 
to live cheap or whatever. Um, have a developmental plan. This entails understanding the zoning, buying the property, knowing your loan programs, and more or less what you can do on the property. Um, tie up the property, buy it. Um, you could use a maybe a zero down loan or an interest only loan or a, um, a variable loan to get into the property cheap because the whole intent is just to lock it up and start turning the wheels to get ready to redevelop it. Um, get pre-qualified for your expansion or developmental property loan. Um, one of these programs or something like that. Start getting those wheels turning so you're pre-qualified. Um, meet with architects, get, develop an architectural plan of what you can build within these constraints of the zoning for the highest and best use. Um, you know, generally speaking, making huge apartments doesn't get you that much more rent and it all costs you per square foot. So just threading that needle and that balance of uh, what you can build nicely that's affordable to the consumer and makes you money and is the highest and best use. Find contractors to bid on the project. Um, obviously you need somebody to build it. Submit to the plan check um, in your local county or city. Um, in my experience, this takes two to three months to go through plan check. So they review your plans, approve what you're proposing to build and then give you um, a permit. Uh, sign the contractor after you're already in plan check and you're, and you're starting to head down that direction or some variation thereof. Um, get your building permit once it's been processed through plan check and they approve. You want to get your building permit so you can break ground. Get the loan funded right around in the same time frame. Break ground on your project and start building. Um, one thing that we messed up on was not working on the utility upgrades if you're augmenting the structure they're probably going to ask you to augment the water gas and power links to your property um, and meters so i would get working on that immediately we got stuck at the tail end of our property and that almost dragged us under um, getting close to final start with the pre-leasing um, if you can get some of the apartments pre-lease, that'll help you with the refinancing at the tail end of the loan if you want to do that or your cash out refi. So get working on that as soon as you can, as soon as you have a viable product and marketing material. Um, uh, begin the refi process. So you're starting to get re, uh, pre-qualified to refinance into a long-term loan or a cash out refi loan or, or whatever that looks like for you. Um, consider a cash out refinance um, that's what we did just because generally you want to try and build the property for less than it will be worth so that you can either refinance into long-term uh, more economical money or pull some money out to roll into the next project uh, maybe another thing is the difference between a portfolio lender versus traditional banks and mortgage lenders um, portfolio lenders are usually local credit unions that have much more flexible terms and can offer you reduced rates or more flexibility of cash out refis. Um, we were looking at going into a jumbo loan that was going to be like five to six percent interest on this fourplex that we built here in San Diego. And I called every credit union in town and I found a front wave credit union here in San Diego that would do a, a 1.4 million dollar cash out refi, $100,000 back to us at 3.1%. Um, so traditional lenders just couldn't do that, that we're operating within the very strict Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac uh, guidelines or whatnot. Um, and then just, you know, what's, what's, the, what's your exit plan? Are you cashing out? Are you, you pulling cash out of the building? Are you getting an equity line against the property? Saving, partnering, and then rinse and repeat if you're going to go on and build more stuff or, <clears throat> you know, maybe just build an income property and then use some of the equity and money that's coming from the income property to buy a nice house for your family or just continue the process. I mean, um, for us, we built our first fourplex in San Diego. I'd like to build another fourplex in Lake Tahoe next um, so that we can have a, a cheap or economical home up there and in San Diego where the, the rents cover most or, or even provide us some profit. And we even inject some short-term rentals into the buildings uh, just to keep the rents low for our long-term tenants. So there's a, a lot of play in what you can do uh, and 
and tons of creativity involved in this process. But it can be amazing um, to be able to design and build structures of your, of your own imagination um, and see it come to life and build your own house to live in uh, with units to support it. So uh, it's something that we're very excited about and uh, are in the beginning stages of this rinse and repeat cycle. So if you have any questions or you'd like to talk through more of this in depth, um, I'm open to talking to anybody who's interested in creative. Um, this is just another th company that we're building and um, we'd be honored to talk to you if you're interested in this. Um, I can be reached at 619-885-8188 or jeremy at sustainablevillageredevelopment.com and then obviously you can see more about our first project here in San Diego at sustainablevillageredevelopment.com.